Welcome to the One Mic, One Voice show, building the collective conscience. Show that's created to give space where your voice, ideas, and informed opinions can be heard, appreciated, and debated. I am Michael Eric Owens in the One Mic studio. Man, whoo, I got an exciting show today, folks. I've been trying to get this guest on for a while, and her schedule finally opened up. You've seen her. I know you've seen her, no doubt. And so uh, we're welcoming to the show today, Dr. Yana Lalich, and um, I'm going to read her bio here in a minute, but I cannot read her entire bio because she has done so many great things uh, with the work that she does. But she's a researcher, author, educator, specializing in cults and extreme groups with a particular focus on charismatic relationships, political and other social movements, ideology and social control and issues of gender and sexuality. She has been a consultant to educational, mental health, business, media, legal professionals, as well as working with current members, former members, and families of members of controversial groups. She's a professor of emerita as, of sociology at California State University. She is the founder and director of the Center for Research of Influence and Control. Welcome to the show, Dr. Lalich. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Michael. I'm so glad we were finally, finally able to schedule this. I really appreciate your patience in waiting for me. Absolutely. Well, it, it is worth the wait because uh, with everything that's going on in our country today and the rise of, wow, I, you know, the, re, the resurgence of, um, we would say, white supremacy in our culture and the rise of Trumpism and kind of the Republican Party uh, not being recognizable. You know, yeah. the thought came to my mind when I was watching you. I believe it was on Heaven's Gate when I was watching you talk and give your analysis. I was thinking, there, there's some similarities here that I'm seeing, but I need an expert to come on and talk about this because uh, I know my listeners will be extremely interested in this conversation. So let's r- get right down to it. Look, first of all, define for us, what is, what is a cult? Well, um, I want to say, first of all, that cults exist on a continuum. So they, they go from, you know, really harmful and dangerous to more or less benign. Um, but for me, a cult is um, it's a, a, a social structure, right? And it, it's, it begins with the charismatic leader who is authoritarian, uh, usually a narcissist, and who comes up with some kind of message of um, being able to offer you something, whether that's um, salvation, whether it's riches, whether it's a political revolution, uh, whether it's good health, whatever it might be, they claim to be the only one who can take you on that path. Secondly, there's an ideology that is uh, what I call transcendent, in which means for me, which means that uh, this ideology or this belief system offers you the answer to everything, right? It gives you a framework for understanding the past, the present, and the future. It's all encompassing. And within that, though, uh, is the requirement to change, that you have to go through a personal transformation in order to be accepted on that path with with that particular leader who knows all. Um, And that transformation process is where the indoctrination comes in. And then finally, there are, uh, within this structure, there are interlocking uh, systems of influence and control that are meant to confine you, uh, to get you to conform, and to get you to comply. And those uh, mechanisms are going to be, you know, 
milder, say, in some groups, but way stricter in other groups. Uh, so for me, that's that's what I see as the, um, you know, as a sociologist, I see it as a social system. Absolutely. Absolutely. What 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 influence has in the modern era social media? How does that play into mm-hmm. now building in not only building, but keeping these cults that are geographically these members geographically uh, separated? Well, how, how does that play into it? Well, social media has had a, uh, has a ha, I'm sorry, has had a great impact in the last, uh, I'd say, decade or more. Um, and so what we're seeing now is something we really haven't seen before, which are these um, sort of cultic groups on a national scale. Um, so in the old days, <laughs> what I call the old <laughs> days, um, the, the sort of your run-of-the-mill cults, uh, the cults we all kind of knew about, you know, had, had a physical presence, right? And they, they may have had people all around the country or all around the world, but they, they were physically together, right? They didn't necessarily live on a compound in the middle of nowhere, but, but they had, vi- you know, visible physical organizations. Now what we have is um, not only the internet as a way or social media as a way to spread the messages and of course, along with that, spread the misinformation and disinformation that we've gotten so familiar with over the last four years. Um, but they've also been uh, been able to use social media to recruit. And I used to think, and I think you know, those of us in this field, we always thought that in order to actually join a group to get recruited, there had to be some. At some point, there had to be personal contact. So even with Heaven's Gate, for example, they, in the end, they did recruit a couple people over the internet, but those people eventually moved to where the group was in San Diego. Or even some of the, um, the terrorist groups like ISIS or, or um, Al-Qaeda, they would generate interest and recruit people on various message boards or in games even and, and stuff. But then eventually they'd get you to go to Pakistan for training or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't have to happen anymore. Now we see that people are getting engulfed in these um, sort of social media-based or internet-based groups, um, and they are actually forming communities, um, these sort of virtual communities. They're not necessarily meeting each other or being physically together, but they're able to accomplish uh, the same kinds of things that, that, my, my old run-of-the-mill cults could do, um, which is to deeply affect and influence people. That that what you just said is frightening to me. I mean, it seems like how do you, you know, how do you begin to um, address, you know, because it has no, you know, all of these prongs in which it can it can move about. You know, it it's we're in a different age in trying to deal yeah. with with these cults. Yes, yes, and I mean, I think. You know, the, the, the Internet and social media have, have been helpful in some way because there's also a great deal of counter-information uh, if people w- would look for it, you know, would, re- right. would, would really do research and look for it and, and sort of try to be, you know, good consumers as though they were buying a car, right? When you buy a car, you don't jump in the first car you see and buy it. You test out different cars Absolutely. and you look consumer reports and you ask people who own that car, well, you know, what were the problems? That's people today, I think our culture has become such a quick fix culture that people are just, you know, jumping onto these things. And then because of algorithms, which to tell you the truth, I don't even understand yeah. what that is, but apparently yeah. these algorithms mm-hmm. can then send you down these various rabbit holes and before you know it you're you're kind of entrapped in something and you never you didn't take the time or couldn't take the time to check out counter messages so it, it is very scary yeah and you, you always i you know you hear individuals and and you know my i might have said this myself you know uh, i'll never join a cult you know that uh, but so so what 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 individuals join cults Anybody, anybody and everybody. I mean, this is one of the myths that only like stupid, crazy, mm. weird people get into cults. Um, so, you know, I myself was in a cult back mm. in the 70s and 80s, and I, I hope people don't consider me stupid, weird, and crazy. But exactly. <laughs> the reality is that, that cults want 
you know, sort of eight type personalities. They want people who can perform for them, who can run the businesses, who can carry out the assignments, who can recruit other people, who have connections and can bring in money or, or big name people that, you know, celebrities to lend legitimacy. So I think we can even see when, when there's been an analysis of who was at January 6th mm -hmm. at the insurrection, most of those people, they weren't, you know, poor poor dumb people from the rural areas they were you know they were businessmen they were educated people yeah. they were um you know accomplished people so i think that right there belies the myth um that you know that it's really stupid people who get into cults um, i mean unfortunately cult recruiters are really good at what they do and they're really good at um sort of what we call love bombing like in the beginning making you feel very special giving you a sense of community, which I think during, especially during the pandemic, people really longed for. You know, everybody was shut up in their houses. And so what, what were you doing? Yeah, you were spending time on the computer. And if you were alone or just one or two people, oh, look, here's this community that loves me. I found this new family. Yeah. So it, it does happen very quickly, but with very smart people. And, and so uh, turning to Trump, um, what and I, I know I, I wish it come a day where where his his name would not be in our conversation but I was I was on the fence about you know him losing the election and then going quietly into the night because I just truly didn't believe that and what is this you know, we're calling it Trumpism now. So, so what is this? When you look at that, what do you see? What, from his perspective, and also those that are trying to uh, follow him, that loyalty. What has he done? Well, you know, I think without even knowing what he was doing, Trump uh, acted very much like a a good, successful cult leader. I mean, he had um, he had a belief system as muddy as it might have been. Um, he knew how to appeal to people um, to their kind of basis instincts, unfortunately. Um, and he was able to send out, you know, those old dog whistles and riled up um, groups and organizations and people who for, you know, for quite a long time have kind of been in the background or have felt they were forced to shut up and not speak their racist beliefs and not act out their racist beliefs. Um, and, and he sort of loosed, loosened all that and, and, and gave people, you know, the, the okay to do that. Um, and then he, you know, he also, uh, like a good charismatic leader, it's hard to think of Trump as charismatic, <laughs> but that's why I think it's important to understand that Charisma is, is, is actually a social relationship. It's how you respond to someone. And, and you, the follower, actually give, you know, you give that person the attribute of charisma. And so it's, a, it's an imbalanced power relationship right from the get-go. The one who is, quote, charismatic has the power over you. And so for Trump, like a good charismatic leader, Every now and then, as we know, he would have his great rallies, right? And he would have his slogans that got people riled up, you know, um, yeah. lock her up, you know, yeah, all that yeah. stuff that we got so mm -hmm. used to hearing. Take back, shouting. take our, take back our country and all of take that. Take back our country, fake news, yeah. you know, let's, let's nobody believe in the mainstream media anymore. And so he rallied the troops uh, you know he he came before them which is very important for leaders to do to let people know yes i'm still there yes i'm yeah, i'm with you you're my family you know as he said on january 6th i love you mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. so um he did all those good things and he uh unfortunately i think for many of us who who, who are on the other side of that you know he awakened this underbelly of of hate and racism um, you know, it, it obviously it was always there. He didn't create it, but he unleashed it. Mm -hmm. And so we have a country now that's that's horribly divided. And, um, you know, as we know, we've seen some really horrible incidents of hate. 
you know, exactly. from from recently the Asians, the anti-Semitic mm-hmm. stuff that's happening now, mm-hmm. black people, of course, who, yes. who have always been mm-hmm. discriminated against, but but it's even gotten worse. The, the kind of acting out that people feel comfortable doing, and and I think what's important to see is that that a lot of these groups, like the Oath Keepers and the uh, what are they, the, the promise, Proud Boys, Promise Keep, the Proud mm-hmm. Boys, mm-hmm. the whatever. Mm-hmm. Those white supremacist groups were always considered very fringe in our society, right? So, but now, um, because Trump gave them license and because they saw that they had what the leader with the highest political power in our country, you know, on their side, essentially, that gave them, you know, the chutzpah. Yeah. Um, to really rise up and and they no longer seem like a fringe movement. They now seem like a, a mass movement. Mm-hmm. And so it's groovier, right, to join up with a mass movement than some weird fringe characters mm-hmm. over there. And so that's another one of the dangerous things that has happened. And, 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 and as you were talking, I, I remember the statement that he made, I alone can fix this. Exactly. And, exactly. And that's... A little bit of a God complex. <laughs> I, I, I do I do think and and so you know these these is there how do you how do you how do you begin to talk to individuals because what we're hearing now is like you know I have a I hear people say you know my dad or my sister my my uncle, uncle. and mm-hmm. I can't I can't have a conversation with them how is is it possible to to begin to to build bridges with with folks that yeah. that are that are under these under this spell yes and 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 that's really important and i think i think the first thing is to not try to have a conversation about their beliefs mm-hmm. but have conversations about anything else <laughs> um, because what you want to do is make them feel safe with you right you want to create what i call a kind of safe haven uh, so you want to talk to them about good times together or vacations you took together or, you know, Aunt Betty's raspberry pie. I don't know, you know, whatever it might be to kind of bring them back into the fold and remind them of, of what life used to be like uh, before they were, you know, kind of off into this other space where perhaps they don't really have real contact or real conversations with people because it is all virtual. Um, and so, you know, and you also need to remember, you know, you're, you don't have the answer to everything and you're not always right. And so you don't want to judge and you don't want to humiliate. You don't want to, you know, say, mm, you know, that that's a really crazy idea um, because that's only going to push them in further. Yeah. So sometimes you just have to bite your tongue, you know, because sometimes people have really heinous beliefs that you can't support, that you don't want to say, oh, I respect your beliefs because you don't respect your beliefs, yeah. their beliefs. And so that's why it's important to kind of recognize that and stay away from that as long as you can until you can sort of pull, pull ease them back in. You're not even pulling them back in. You want to ease them back in. Um, you know, get have somebody get in touch with them who maybe isn't part of the family, mm-hmm. who was a good friend of theirs, you know, a friend from school or a friend from the tavern down the street, whatever it might be, yeah. um, that's not quite as threatening to them. Um, and, you know, also I think it's important you have to recognize that obviously this has some meaning for them. This gave them something that they they thought they didn't have, you know, this sense of community, the sense of purpose. And so you, you can't, you, you don't want to just rip it away from them because then what, what is there? So it's a very slow process. And I think people have to never give up, you know, never give up, try to stay in touch with the person. Don't ever cut them off. They may cut you up, but don't you ever cut them off. And, and you just have to hope that one day they're going to, you know, see the light, so to speak. Yeah. And, I, and I know how frustrating and difficult it is, believe me. And, and I mean this idea of uh, this becoming part of your identity. And when you mention, mm-hmm. you know, when you do away with that, who am I then? When I've exactly. based kind of my life and my world belief upon this, uh, mm-hmm. the desire to hang on to it is even exactly. greater when you think you're going to lose it. Exactly. Um, have we have we seen anything like this? Um, this this 
in, on, on, I guess, on this national scale? Well, you know, we've seen fascism. We've seen what true, Hitler true. did. We've seen Mussolini in Italy. Mm-hmm. We've seen North Korea, uh, China under Chairman Mao and his whole program that he called this thought reform program of like indoctrinating the entire nation. So w- we have seen that. And those are those were, in a sense, cults on a national scale. Uh, it, they had all the characteristics. Um but as we were saying earlier, what's new is that is this the virtual world, mm-hmm. um, and and what's new, I think, is the power of of so, of social media as well as regular media. I mean, we've got some media outlets that are also feeding into this. Yes. Um, you know, I saw an article the other day of someone saying, I, "How do I get my dad to stop watching OAN?" Mm-hmm. You know, these networks yeah. like Fox that are exactly. that are still saying, you know. Biden didn't win the election. I mean, good grief. You know, those of us think, you know, how can anyone believe that? But yeah, um, we have to accept that, you know, that millions of people do. Exactly. Um, and it, and it's tough. I mean, people ask me this all the time. You know, how do you undo this? And mm. good Lord, if I had the answer, I'd be really rich. <laughs> But it's going to take all of us. It's going yeah, to take yeah. all of us. I'm just going to scratch that question off right quick. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, so, okay, no, go ahead. Well, what I was going to say, I, you know, I think one thing we need, which, of course, you know, when I say this, I get attacked for being, you know, some kind of crazy mm-hmm. socialist. But we need some kind of really, uh, really thoughtful national education mm-hmm. program to really bring back critical thinking to this country because we we have seen in since the 50s since television came out you know i think we've seen what i call the dumbing down of america mm-hmm. and i don't mean to put people down but th- this is a reality in our country um that that the media and hollywood and all these things have have so affected the way people think and so i think we we need to bring this back to the schools to, to really teach critical thinking. Um, you know, in the schools today, there's so much emphasis on service, 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 which I, which is wonderful. Yeah. Service is wonderful. But I know when I was a professor, you know, I would see these college applications and, and it's all about, oh, I volunteered here and I volunteered there. And in the summer I did that. Well, what about your grades? You know, what about your intellectual performance? And I think we've lost touch with that. And, and so by, by educating people, uh, you know, about race, about the Holocaust, about, mm-hmm. you know, these things that go awry and, and how, how really to do research yeah, and what to believe on Wikipedia or not. You know, I mean, the, this is what, what I think would be a good beginning, mm-hmm. um, as well as dealing with those extremist groups mm-hmm. in, in whatever way we can to, to make them fringe again. You know, you remind me of a course I took in my undergrad under undergrad was uh it was titled pseudoscience and it was it and, and it was we go. challenged everything and it mm-hmm. was a, just a course on critical thinking and uh the philosophy courses i took it was it i'm i'm indebted to those professors for challenging me not not yeah. only with 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 what i was learning but challenging me for what i already thought i knew <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. No, I mean, I, you know, I think about this all the time because, you know, I grew up in, in Milwaukee in. Oh, ho, ho, ho. No, you got to stop right there. What? I grew up in Milwaukee. Oh my God. Oh, I went to Dominican high school. I grew up in Milwaukee. Um, I went to Juneau high school. Okay. Which was the worst white high school in Milwaukee. I know Juneau very well. So, all right. Well, see, we got that connection. (laughs) So, but what I was going to say, I went to the, the, this, probably the second worst high school in Milwaukee mm. after the black high school yes. in the black neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Cause Milwaukee's always That's why I went to Dominican. I'll, 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 exactly. Right. And, but I had a damn good education, mm. you know, even in that, not such a great school Wow. and, you know, got, went on to university of Wisconsin mm. in Madison, you know, got Fulbrights, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. And, and, but my point is, we've lost somehow we've lost that that type of education and um 
and it, and it's just criminal. You know, it's mm-hmm. criminal when you see. You know, there used to be the the Jay Leno show. You know, and he would ask people on the street, like, <laughs> yeah. "Who's the president?" And they go, "Ah, oh, you know." And but if you did that in France or Germany or some mm. other country, you don't find that. Yeah. And and I think we need to accept that yeah. that we've we've lost it somewhere along the way. And and we we need to bring that back as well as bringing back our humanity. You know. Yeah. I mean, we with the attack on critical race theory now, uh, I was just reading an article about a um, a professor here that's teaching at one of the community colleges that says her course was canceled. And I'm in Oklahoma now. Her course was canceled because they just passed a bill uh, that uh, January 1 uh, bans critical uh, race theory, which is, you know, again, who teaches critical race theory? I mean, it, it, the elements of it, the systemic racism in the history of, uh, of, of that sort of um, relationships when it comes to Native Americans and so forth and blacks, that's being taught. And, and they think that that's a blanket to, to not teach anything that, right. and, and as the bill said, that would make anybody feel, uh, to, to, to feel sorry for their race like what is is education what is when, when does when does feelings come into learning exactly exactly <laughs> yeah I mean it's all it's all so ex, so exaggerated now on from one end to the other and 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 um I you know on some level I'm really glad I don't have kids because mm. I'd hate to have yeah. have them growing up in this environment yeah. right now you it's, know I, I mean I'm yeah. 76 years mm-hmm. old I never thought I'd see anything yeah. like this. You know, I've been I've been through the Vietnam War and right, the, sort of the end of the civil rights movement. I was still pretty young, but yeah, the the women's movement, all mm. these great movements that happened over time, the Black Power movement, yeah. and now and now it's uh, I don't yeah. know, anyway. I don't want to depress your audience. No, no, no. So I'll <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so what do you what do you think of the national response? as far as Congress is concerned. And I know that the justice department now is, is focusing on uh, extreme groups, but it doesn't seem like they're defining what is happening with, with, with Trump's movement as being, you know, to having any attributes of a cult. So, you know, what, what do we say to national leaders? You know, it's difficult because, you know, first of all, there's all the Republican national leaders, most of whom, unfortunately, have have fallen down that rabbit hole, you know, and still honor Trump. And, and you know, I think a lot of us thought, like you said at the beginning, that Trump would maybe go away. But, oh, no, yeah, um, they've they've made him almost more important than ever at this point. Um, he's not even in power and they're kowtowing yeah. to him. And so those folks we're not going to be able to talk to, I don't think. Um, they've got to come to it on their own or, or by their constituents kind of t- taking them to task. But, you know, the 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 lack of uh, interest that that we've had for domestic domestic violence, domestic terrorism uh, or domestic violent extremism, I guess, is as the, as the government t- calls it. You know, when Trump came in, he cut all those funds from from that those organizations that were trying to fight that. So now some of them are trying to get back on their feet. Um, but but I think that's one of the biggest tasks that we have ahead of us to to try to silence those groups. Um, you know, not that I believe in censorship, but but you know, they're spouting hate speech. Yes. They're you know, and they're they're recruiting. You know, the the QAnon people who got disenchanted after January sixth. Well, what happened? The white supremacist groups went in and tried to re- to recruit those disaffected people into their ranks, right? Yeah. So um, I think if we continue to really um, have strong convictions of those who did get arrested after January sixth, and if we can really push our lawmakers to focus more on uh, domestic extremism and domestic terrorism, you know, then maybe there's some hope, but we've all got to do our job. It's on all of us. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it sounds to me like you, you're seeing this as a long haul, like we're going to be uh, dealing with this for a very long time. Yeah. And I'm, I'm afraid that that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I wow. hope I live to see a positive outcome. Yeah, isn't that? I mean, you know, and, and again, I'm getting up in age myself, and and I and I think like I don't want to leave under these conditions. I mean, you know. <laughs> Like we, we've made, uh, you know, scribes in the past, but I just think it's, as you say, when the, when the national structure has went down the rabbit hole, we're in deep trouble because that's the leadership, right? That's who sets the tone for us. And so, so are you, are you seeing um, more people reach out to you really looking for answers in this time period more so than, than, than other times? Well, certainly different kinds of of people uh, you know i mean always families or former members of of again my run of the mill calls um uh, you know have been um contacting me for years but i i would say in the last year and a half i have really been inundated by uh media requests by families um by people who are affected in one way or another by this, um, by, you know, some of the podcasts mm -hmm. having a more political bent and, and wanting to talk about, you know, rate the racism and what's been, been happening in our country. And, um, you know, and I, I, I just wish I could do more. I wish I, I had ways to, you know, support organizations more and bring more awareness uh, in whatever ways, because it, this is a big battle, you know, yeah. and, and, and for us white folks, you know, we've laid back for a long time and, and sucked on the glory of, of our privilege. And I know a lot of people don't like to hear that, but that's the reality. And I think, I think it's going to need all of us standing up for each other and, and bringing that humanity back to America. Yeah. And, and you're right. I mean, I, I you know, I, I thought about leaving a number of times. Of course, then all the countries said no Americans can come here. And I was like, <laughs> damn, you know, <laughs> now what? <laughs> right. But on the other hand, you know, this is my country and I, and, yeah. and, and I hate to see what's happening. Um, you know, the police killings, everything, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. I have my expertise in, in this field, but I have to tell you when the, when the, Chauvin trial was going on in the George Floyd case. I was glued to my TV yeah. every day, all day. I didn't do another thing. Yeah, you know, it's like we all have to take an interest in this and and be activists. I I, I totally agree with you, and I and I think you know you mentioned George Floyd, George Floyd. I mean, that was a reckoning, I think, for mm -hmm. race in this country, and it jilted. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of white folks as well as um, and, and for me, Doc, it 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 resurfaced all the trauma, you know, mm -hmm. how I had I have was was, you know, com compartmentalizing that trauma. And when I saw what happened to him, I, it just the, the walls just fell down. And I was and I know like so many other people of color, I was overwhelmed. I mean, yeah. literally, it took me weeks to even have a conversation with anyone yeah. about it without, uh, you know, crying my eyes out. And and so we're in this this period that I that I think we're all trying to make sense of. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and that's why we need to talk to folks like you to 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 let us know, number one, that that we're not crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 we're 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 at least thinking about it in the in the right way. But let's talk mm -hmm. in, in in closing here. Let's talk about young people mm -hmm. and uh, the effect that all of this is having on this generation that doesn't know. I mean, I, I remember I had to go in the in the phone booth and put ten cents in and make a call. I mean, I mean, yeah. we're, we're we're dealing with folks now that don't even know what that is the vcr and and so so how do we how do we talk to to young people about this how do we talk to you know kids about this you know i think that has to be done on a community level uh, i think that's the best way to do it i think we we cannot at this point anyway rely on on any national media outlets for that um but i think local media local radio stations and community organizations, I think that's where, where, where you really can have personal contact and you really can have groups of people learning together and discussing things together and supporting each other and, and sort of really getting down, down and dirty with it, if, if I might say. And I think um, 
you know, families can do it, but families probably don't do it enough, mm -hmm. es especially especially if we're talking about minority mm -hmm. uh, populations, because those people are working so hard. If, I mean, if they have a job, they're working two, three jobs, right? They're not sitting around the kitchen table having political discussions. And so that's why I think uh, the schools and the community organizations, the sports organizations, the, the clubs, you know, the places where young people gather and tell you the truth, I don't know where they gather these days. They gather on their phone, I guess. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, whatever we can do to, to, to build that, that sense of community and bonding and friendship and sticking together with each other. And, uh, you know, I think, our, we've gotten very isolated in our country. Um, and, you know, it started in the 80s with this kind of me, me, me movement, and, and it's all about me and my success, and, you know, from the Reagan years, and, and we need to get rid of that and, and get back to sort of community, a community sense. Yeah, and, and, and that probably is where the answer lies in mm -hmm. uh, being able to educate the younger generation and really the folks that are holding on to power, um, you know, eventually they're going to move on and, and what will take their place. And so maybe that's where the concentration should right. be. And, right. um, and, but again, it goes back to what we said in our day, will we see, right. uh, you well, know, think of that kid, you know, I forget his name, but the kid who came out of that school shooting, in Florida. Oh yeah, that was. Um, um, what's I can't, his name? I, it wasn't it Adam something. I think it was. I don't know, but yeah, we yeah, all know who absolutely, about, absolutely. You know, I mean, he was brilliant, and yeah. he's now. I think he's in college now, and he's exactly. still speaking out, and he's still yeah. doing stuff. And yeah, those kids were incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, the stuff that they did and the rallies that they had, and and um, so I think that that's where we need to put our hope uh, in in those kids, both the the. Uh, level-headed white kids and, yeah. and in the uh, minority populations. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, any, any final thoughts or closing words that you would like to leave the audience as we, as we look at what is happening specifically with, with Trumpism in our, our country? No, I just think, you know, probably the most important thing is, is figure out a way that you can contribute, you know, whether it's money, whether it's some time volunteering. I think this next period and the apparently the 2024 election is going to be just horrific. And I think we need to all gear up for that in whatever way we can and kind of maybe take some guidance from Stacey Abrams. I mean, she's pretty yeah. incredible. Absolutely. And, um, you know, just do what we can, do what we can to to bring it back. Well, Dr. Lalich, thank you so much for being here. I'm so happy we, we uh, were able to work the time out and, and uh, uh, you're, you're a fellow Milwaukeean. So yeah. see, I, yeah, I, <laughs> Hey, we gonna, you know, when we get some time, we had to talk off, uh, off, off. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll have a beer together. And <laughs> exactly. Talk about Milwaukee. <laughs> Reminisce about Milwaukee. Absolutely. But it's been a pleasure uh, having you on the show. I mean, I just want to wish you continued success in the great work Thank that you, you do, uh, educating you. us on, um, you know, these things that are so difficult to understand, mm -hmm. but you put them in a way that I think, um, you know, enlightens us and, and brings us to a, a point where we can make sense of it all. And I, and I want to mm -hmm. thank you for that. No, oh, thank you. And thank you for having me on your show. It was really an honor. Ab absolutely. As always, history will speak of us. Somewhere in the distant future, a scribe will reach down deep into the archives of our time. And what will she find? Will she discover that we overcame our differences? Will she find that out of many, we became one? Or will she find that we solved nothing and remain a divided peoples? Yes, history will speak of us. We can make a difference if we try. We can be the change that's in our life All we gotta do is work together We gotta raise our children better We gotta stop the hate, stop the hate And spread the love One mic, one voice You can change the world, it's your choice One mic, one voice You can change the world, it's your choice One mic, one voice 
can change the world, it's your choice. One voice, one voice. You can change the world, it's your choice. Thank you for downloading the One Mic, One Voice show. Take a moment and subscribe and share. You can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, or any other podcasting platform. Thank you for your continued support and for your voice. You can change the world. It's your choice. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed on the One Mic, One Voice show are not the views, thoughts, and opinions of our sponsors.